How's it going everyone? It is Panjano here and in this video we're going to be covering quick, easy and basic optimizations in which every single person using an AMD Ryzen CPU should have applied to your system. The following optimizations, settings and fixes coming up in this video will help you achieve more FPS, fix any potential stuttering issues you could be experiencing and increase security of your PC. Every single person watching this video with an AMD Ryzen CPU in this PC or if you know anyone that does have one and make sure all of the following updates have been applied. With all of that and more coming straight after a message from today's video sponsor. Tired of seeing the Activate Windows Wall Watermark, built a new PC, or just want to own Windows at a major discount, head over to WhoKeys to purchase a Windows 10, 11, Home, or Pro OEM key at a major discount. Make sure to use code PAN20 for a further 20% off at checkout, where you can use a safe and secure payment method such as PayPal. Once your key is delivered, simply input the key inside of Windows, and boom, you're now completely activated and own Windows forever. You'll now have access to all features and no more watermark. Thanks again to WhoKeys for sponsoring today's video. We're first of all going to be finding and installing the latest chipset drivers for our Ryzen CPU. Chipset drivers are incredibly important, they are often not automatically downloaded, and include security fixes, bug fixes, and potential performance improvements, which are free and easily available to all Ryzen CPU users. We first of all need to find out which chipset your motherboard has, and it's relatively simple to do. For this, you'll need to navigate to the bottom left hand side, type in dxdiag, open up this small command at the top. Inside of here, we want to navigate down to your system model. This is going to be the model of the motherboard installed to your system. Find the system model and search for it on your your system. So mine is MS-7D13. Once you've input that information, scroll down and you should find the motherboard in which you have listed. So for me that's going to be an MSI MEG B550 Unify X. We don't have to click on any of these links, we are just interested in where it says B550. For you this could say B550, B450, B350, X370, X470, X570, and for those of you on more budget boards you may also find A320 or A520 chipsets on your motherboard. With that information you can use the link in the description down below for the chipset drivers or simply search for amd.com slash support. On this page you'll need to navigate towards the bottom, head down to chipsets, then select AMD socket AM4. On the right hand side you'll find all of the chipsets in which we searched for earlier and you want to select the chipset in which it was listed for you, then select submit. Select the operating system which you're currently using, scroll down, then find the listed chipset driver, go to the right hand side and select download. Once completed the chipset installer will then open up and double check your system hardware to ensure that you are installing the correct driver. For most people watching this video, you'd want to select everything with inside of here, go to the bottom right and select install. Throughout this process, your screen could flicker a few times and at the end of it, you'll more than likely be prompted to quickly restart your system. Once you've logged in as usual, you're then good to go and your brand new chipset drivers will be installed. You'll have all the necessary bug fixes, performance improvements and security improvements to keep your system more secure and running better. Whilst we installed our chipset driver, this could have also installed additional power plans to our system, which we could utilize to achieve more performance. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side once again, type power space plan. Select edit power plan. At the top of your screen go to the navigation bar and select where it says power options. Now to change power plan it's very simple and easy to do. Find the desired power plan you want to go with, click on the dot next to it. Once that's selected you're then running on that power plan and you can then exit out. You can change power plans back at any point so remember what your system is defaultly set to. The power plan you go with will depend on how you use your system and whether you want to optimize towards power efficiency or outright performance. For me I like to have my system running as fast as possible as often as possible so I will always go with a high performance power plan, ultimate performance power plan, or if you have it available, the AMD Ryzen high performance power plan. For those of you that want a super efficient PC, this is especially important for those of you running on laptops or small form factor systems, I would definitely recommend going with balanced in your case. If you don't have the ultimate performance power plan currently installed to your system and you would like to try it, you can turn it back off at any time by selecting any of the other power plans, so you can try it, but I would only really recommend trying it for those of you on fast desktop PCs with adequate cooling. For this, navigate to the bottom left hand side, click on the Windows button, type in CMD, right click on command prompt, run as administrator. In the comment section down below you'll be able to find the ultimate performance power plan to copy and paste link. Highlight all of that available text with inside of there, right click it, select copy. Jump into the CMD, select control and V on your keyboard to paste, then press enter, exit out, go back to the power plan, go to the top right to the navigation bar, hit refresh, scroll down and you can then select ultimate performance. Next up is a very boring step but a very necessary one. We're going to navigate to the bottom left hand side, type update, then select check for updates. Go up to the top for check for updates once again and we're then going to run through any and all available Windows updates which may be inside of here for you to once again potentially fix any bugs you could be experiencing and it will also accumulate any necessary driver updates or features to help your system run faster. And this is more so important for those of you that may have adopted Windows 11 on your Ryzen system. For those of you on Ryzen systems that are using Windows 11 you could also 
also still be experiencing a Windows 11 stutter issue with inside of your games, desktop, or any intensive apps. And this is due to the trusted platform module on Ryzen systems being software emulated in many cases, which causes this bug in Windows 11. There have been updates in which you can accumulate to potentially fix this on your system, so if you are running on a Ryzen CPU, regardless of which generation, and using Windows 11, one thing you will definitely want to look further into is to apply any potential BIOS updates to your PC's motherboard. This could be essential to help fix the TPM issue you could be experiencing if you are on Windows 11. You'll first of all need to navigate over to Google. Once you search for your system manufacturer, one of the top links will be to a website such as ASRock, MSI, Gigabyte, Asus, or one of the top motherboard manufacturers. That is my motherboard, so I'm going to see if there are BIOS updates available. Click on the link for your motherboard. If you're using a different manufacturer, the web page layout could be slightly different, but they're typically quite similar. Somewhere along the top, you want to find the support page. Inside of the support page, navigate down to drivers and downloads. Somewhere with inside of it, you should be able to select from BIOS, driver, and utility downloads. We want to select BIOS. Once you select this, from the top to the bottom, all of the latest BIOS updates will be listed. As you can see for me at the time of recording this video, there has been a BIOS update just a matter of days ago for my motherboard, which brings support for the Agisa 1.2.0.7 update with all of the features in which that brings. Once the update has been completed, boot into your system as usual, where you may hopefully find that your TPM issue could be fixed. Another simple yet quick thing to check on any Ryzen system is to make sure that you aren't using an excessive amount of USB devices plugged in at all times and unplugging unnecessary USB devices, because on some Ryzen systems, the USB controller can be slightly sensitive, causing micro stutter with inside of the operating system and games, so you don't want to be overloading it. So don't keep unnecessary USB devices connected at all times, only plug them in when you need them and unplug them when you don't. It may also be worthwhile to update your chipset and motherboard BIOS to potentially fix these issues as well. Next up, we're going to be jumping into BIOS optimizations for AMD Ryzen systems. This step may not be for everyone. They're going to be more advanced optimizations to help you get the most out of your processor. We won't be jumping into anything extremely advanced with inside of there, just basic settings in which you should look to apply. If that's too much for you, you can skip this step by all means, but if you want to see a hefty performance increase on most systems, I would definitely stick around. To boot into your motherboard's BIOS, you'll need to restart the system and spam the delete key on your keyboard. Most motherboard BIOSes will look slightly different. The settings we're going to be looking for are AMD specific settings, so they will be available inside of your BIOS in certain sections, you may just need to look around. Now before we change anything with inside of the BIOS, this is going to be more guidance rather than an outright guide. You might not want to follow these settings exactly, but I'm going to show you what settings you want to do further research on for your system, cooling, specific processor, and what works best for your personal needs. Do not change any settings unless you are 110% sure you know what the setting will do and your system is going to be capable of running that setting as you could run into BIOS instability. Next, we're going to be heading over to this MSI motherboard's overclocking settings where we'll be able to find our XMP setting, Infinity Fabric setting, and PBO or PBO2 settings to increase performance on the system overall. First of all, if you find XMP profiles available with inside of here, I would definitely recommend either setting profile 1 or profile 2, depending on the speed difference of those. If you're running on a RAM kit from speeds of 3000 to 3800 MHz, you'll typically be able to set XMP profiles running into no issues whatsoever, especially if this is a more average RAM kit. Once you have enabled your XMP profile, the listed speed should be below it. As you can see for me, my XMP profile is 3600 megahertz. Once you find this setting, we then want to navigate down to our infinity fabric, or in some cases, this could be called F-clock or FCLK frequency. This must be set to half of the DRAM frequency in which you've just set. So my DRAM frequency is 3600. Half of that's going to be 1800, so that's what I'm going to set my infinity fabric to, to ensure that I have one-to-one -one scaling between the RAM and the infinity fabric clock on the CPU to ensure optimal latency on a Ryzen processor. Once your settings are then been applied, go to the top right, select save. This will then boot into the system with all of the applied settings in which you have, where you can then boot into some of your favorite games or heavy workloads and test them out. Once you've completed the settings inside of the BIOS for your system in which you then want to use, you can go to the right hand side or press escape a few times to save your profile. If you want to save the profile anywhere with inside of here, you can do so. Alternatively, if you want to reset the BIOS settings back to default, if you're running into instability issues, crashing errors, or you just want to change them back for any reason, head down to save and exit. Inside of here, you'll typically find a restore default section. Once you click this button, everything will be set back to the default setting it will have out of the factory. Later on down the line, if you are stuck in a boot loop or run into an issue, updating your BIOS, changing settings in the BIOS or any overclocking settings, for an extreme measure, if you want to completely reset the BIOS settings back to default manually, you can do this by turning off the PC, unplugging it, holding down your power button for a few seconds to discharge any electricity left in the circuit. Once that's completed, take the side panel off, locate the motherboard battery and take this out for anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute. Alternatively, if you have a more modern system on a fancy motherboard, you may have a CMOS button somewhere located on the back. Clicking this button and holding it down whilst the system is turned off and then doing it whilst it's turned on will reset the motherboard BIOS back to stock settings, hopefully fixing any BIOS related 
related issues you could run into in the future if you are trying out extra overclocking settings on your own and if they don't end up working out. If you have any other tips, tricks or suggestions for those of you running on AMD Ryzen CPUs, do let me know down in that comment section down below. And if you have enjoyed this video, do consider checking out the two videos on screen now for further optimizations to your